Australian High Commission in Wellington targeted in blood over main silent deaths. Australian High Commission in Wellington targeted in blood over main silent deaths Iranian asylum seeker Hamd Shamshiripur was found dead on main island on 7 August, 2017. Blood, or a symbolic equivalent, was thrown on the Australian High Commission in Wellington decrying the latest death of an asylum seeker on main island. On Thursday posters were also put up in the Thorand and diplomatic precinct of refugees who have died in the Australian offshore detention centres in Papua New Guinea. This week, Iranian asylum seeker Ham Shamshirip, 31, was the fifth detainee to die on Manus Island. On Thursday, the Australian High Commission in Wellington was targeted with a red substance over the latest death in custody of an asylum seeker on Australia's notorious main asylum detention centre in Papua New Guinea. Al Jazeera reported he was found hanging from a tree near the East Lorengay Refugee Transit Centre on the island on Monday. The media outlet reported refugees on Manus Island were questioning initial reports that he had committed suicide after injuries were reportedly found on his body. Human rights lawyer Michael Bott said the situation on Manus Island was profoundly offensive, it's inexcusable. A lawyer acting for the family of Iranian refugee Shamshirapur has called for an inquest into his death. George Newhouse says Shamshirapur's family in Iran awoke to see photos online of their son hanging from a tree on Manus. Refugee activists say foul play can't be ruled out. The family don't know what to believe, Newhouse told reporters in Sydney on Wednesday. Detainees sit inside accommodation at the main asylum detention center in Papua New Guinea, February 11, 2017. The lawyer is calling on the Australian government to investigate Shamshirapur's death. Government officials knew about his fragile condition and they left him to die, he said. Peace Action spokeswoman Emma Cullen said the Wellington group was anonymously provided with images of the Wellington protest and it fully supported the actions. Papua New Guinea's main asylum detention centre in October, 2016. Cullen said the asylum seekers were being treated like prisoners and their human rights were constantly ignored. They knew this man had been suffering with his mental health. This death and the others show the Australian government has blood on its hands, Cullen said. New Zealand should push for its token offer to take 150 asylum seekers to be taken up, she said. In 2013, New Zealand offered to take up to 150 refugees from centres on Nauru and Manus Island an offer which Australia initially rejected, due in part to fears it could provide a backdoor into Australia via citizenship. Human rights lawyer Michael Bott said Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull's stance was at odds with international laws and human rights laws. It's profoundly offensive it's inexcusable. You have people fleeing brutal regimes deprived and fearful and they've committed no wrong but they're effectively in prison for the crime of trying to stay alive. Its soft stance on the issue made New Zealand complicit to a degree in the abuse, Bot said. A police spokeswoman said police were investigating the incident at the High Commission but only forensic tests would be able to determine what the blood-like substance was. We do not condone protests of this nature and are liaising with local authorities on this matter, a spokesperson for the Australian High Commission in Wellington said.